of the constant emolument. But my feeling was that if we had one, um, one commission to do it, it would be fair and probably it would even give members of parliament more money. But whenever you try to increase your, your salary or your emolument, you are depicted as wrongdoers and so on because you have a conflict of interest. That was my suggestion. And when I ceased being prime minister, I gave a lecture to new members of parliament. I made a suggestion. Then people abused me. They said, you are no longer prime minister. Are you raising it now? I said, no. I raised it when I was prime minister and lead of government business in parliament. I still believe it is the best arrangement. And when you are determining the salaries, you must have a scientific uh, way of determining a salary. For example, the risk of the job. If, for example, you are given a job of cutting off people's heads when they are <coughs> sentenced to death, it may appear simple, but it's a major risk. So some money should be attached to that risk. There are scientific methods of determining the salary which should be given to anybody. Professor Sivambi. Now, the police at the border town of Malaba have arrested one Jamali Mukisa, who is suspected to have murdered Makere in Vastidon. Charles Sekabembe's body was found hanging on a tree in Mavira Forest recently. The suspect is said to have been key in planning the professor's murder. Mukisa was apprehended at a shrine in Malaba following a tip off and he's been transferred to Kasangati police station where he faces questioning for other crimes. <laughs> our intelligence team on the ground got information through our informers and the man was sighted around Malaba and definitely we got him hiding in the shrine. <laughs> Residents of Tebanzunga in Mutiana district have launched a primary school teacher, uh, lynched, I uh, beg your pardon, a teacher who they suspect was trying to break into a house. The mob justice followed allegations that Patrick Kitio had been caught as he tried to dig his way into one of the houses late in the night. We have a report. Patrick Chitio, a teacher at Sonora's primary school, had his life taken by an angry mob. It is said that Chitio, together with three other people, were caught digging their way into one Vincent Kawaga's house. The other three got away, but Chitio was unfortunate. He was caught, and residents beat him up, injuring him badly, and eventually killing him. As the police traced who was involved in the lynching, two people, including the owner of the house that is said to have been targeted, were arrested. Chitio's body has been taken to the mortuary as investigations are carried out. The African Union has uh, come under fire for amending a protocol for the African Court of Justice pronouncing immunity for, from prosecution for serving heads of state and public officials. According to the former executive director of the World Bank, the African Union helps to perpetuate leaders and regimes that work together with their people. Mfele Ramfele was speaking at the 22nd Joseph Mubiru Memorial Lecture yesterday. I don't know how many of you are aware that at the meeting that was held in West Africa in a few weeks ago, the AU adopted the protocol on amendments to the protocol on the statute of the African Court of Justice and Human Rights. This protocol grants immunity to prosecution for heads of state and public officials. The AU in one fell swoop has created an incentive for those violating human rights to stay in office in perpetuity. How can this build vibrant and fair societies on our continent? 
is the solidarity among African leaders, which is used as a protective shield behind which they hide their poor performance to the detriment of ordinary citizens. The Uganda National Bureau of Standards has tightened the reins on the problem of fuel adulteration that is plaguing the country. And together with the Ministry of Energy and various fuel companies in the country, it has put in place systems to monitor and control the quality of fuel that is coming in and being circulated. This is one of the priority areas of, the, of focus as the organization celebrates its 25th year anniversary. Fuel products are in the top most complained products on the market. They are in the top 10. And therefore, our role as the Uganda National Bureau of Standards is to ensure that those complaints reduce or are eliminated. What are the sources of those adulterations? It's one of the questions that we are normally asked. One of them is actually the fuel coming in, entering our borders, when it's already adulterated. That is one source of adulteration. The second source is through the distribution chain. <clears throat> there are some people who want to take advantage of the product, they adulterate it and try to make money out of it. We have increased the mobilization in the field. There are now more of our people in the field with the equipment that tests the quality of fuel. That has enabled us to reduce the uh, percentage of adulteration uh, downwards. We are going to take a short break on TV at one comes back with more stories that are making headlines this afternoon. Use white star laundry bath soap with a lemon fragrance and you'll have a fresh clean day. Be like a star. Use White Star. Don't stop, Daddy. My dad is the star. White Star Laundry Basso. All day fresh clean. Get ready to be counted. Knowing how many we are makes it easy to plan for all of us. So answer all questions correctly. Your information is confidential and is only used for equitable resource allocation, improving service delivery and planning. Count for what counts. Starting from 28th August to 6th September 2014, together we count. On the next episode brought to you by At Orange, we know you want to do more on the internet. That's why we bring you happy hour, day and night. Login. The fashion show at the MTN Arena. And the best of Bebe Cool. Don't miss all this this Wednesday at 7.30 only on NTV. can download movies at the lowest prices and never fast from Orange. Dial star 133 hash to buy a data bundle. Happy hour changes with Orange. Today changes with Orange. Welcome back. This is NTV at One. We now bring you a story of a beautiful woman turned beggar. And that was after an acid attack that she says was carried out by her husband. The gruesome act has devastated Flores Nansamba, who has lost all hope for a better future. Nansamba recounted her ordeal to Gertrude Oitwale in this week's fe living, feature, living Life feature.
Kampala, like many cities around the world, has scores of poor people begging on the streets. You have probably walked past many destitutes without batting an eye, but many pedestrians who walk by Florence Nansamba are moved with sympathy at her sight. Florence is a 30-year-old who always sits on the streets with her outstretched hand seeking arms from passers-by. She is quite unfortunate. Only six years ago, she was a healthy woman with perfect sight. Florence was married to a man she loved and had two adorable children. But her marriage came to a terrible end after seven years. She recalls the grief that engulfed her shortly before the breakup. <laughs> Florence says her husband threw acid at her shortly after their separation. The nasty experience happened when Florence was 24, but she still has vivid memories of the pain she experienced. Her relatives reported the case to the police, but the prime suspect, who is her ex-husband, has not been brought to book until now. The acid attack did not only take Florence's sight, but also shattered her future goals. The mother of two hits the streets every day to beg so as to fend for her family. Florence too does not love what she does, but she has to fend for herself and the family. But she still regrets why she married the man who eventually led her to this situation. We set off to Florence's home in Zana, which is about four miles from the city center. Florence comes from here every morning and only gets help from some good Samaritans on a few occasions. This room is what Florence, her two children and a caretaker call home. They rent it at 40,000 shillings per month. By the time of our visit, Florence's two sons were at school. This elderly lady called Agnes Nasuna has taken care of Florence since the day her husband threw acid at her. Nasuna sells food stuff and uses part of her money to supplement the handouts Florence gets from begging. Often, when she looks back, Florence regrets the conditions that fate has thrown her way. Florence now bases her hopes for a better future on people's kindness. Gertrude to Musime Uitkwade, NTV. Look now at what's happening across the borders. The United Nations Security Council envoys have warned South Sudan's worrying leaders that they would face sanctions if a civil war that has pushed the young nation to the brink of famine does not stop. Representatives of the 15-member council who are in the capital Juba on a two-day mission were also due to meet rebel chief Riyak Masha. EU special representative to the Horn of Africa, Alex Rondos, also expressed concern that both sides in South Sudan continue spending their money on arms and fighting for power, while South Sudanese citizens are beginning to serve to death. We said there was no justification for this humanitarian disaster. Thousands of people have been killed and more than 1.5 million have fled almost eight months of carnage sparked by a power struggle between Kill and his sack deputy, Mashar, with battles between government troops, mutina soldiers and ragtag militia forces divided by tribe. The United Nations are say the South Sudan food crisis is the worst in the world with aid workers warning of famine within weeks if conflict continues. The United States said it would provide 180 million U.S. dollars in additional aid to help feed the people. 
The funds would raise 636 million US dollars, the total amount that Washington has put up in humanitarian assistance. Stop start peace talks in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa, which began in January, officially restarted again last week, but the delegates have made little, if any, progress. On to sport now, Cristiano Ronaldo has uh, at his best as Real Madrid beat Sevilla to clinch the Spanish Super Cup. And in England, Maron Fellaini's stoppage time goal ensured Louis van Gaal ended his first home match in charge of Manchester United with a 2-1 uh, win uh, victory over Valencia. Cristiano Ronaldo scored twice as Real Madrid claimed the first European silverware of the season with a 2-0 Super Cup win over Sevilla in Cardiff. Ronaldo starting alongside new recruits James Rodriguez and Toni Kroos tapped in a cross from Cardiff-born Gareth Bale to give Real the lead. The Portuguese doubled his side's advantage with a drill shot from the left when played in by Karim Benzema. And it sounded an ominous warning to those sides hoping to halt Real this season, both domestically and in European competition. It is the first of six trophies Real are hoping to win this season. Elsewhere, Louis van Gaal's first match at Old Trafford as Manchester United manager ended in victory after Marouane Fellaini's injury time goal sealed a 2-1 friendly win over Spanish side Valencia last night. Darren Fletcher had put United ahead early in the second half after when Rooney had missed a penalty before the break. Rodrigo equalized in Valencia's best spell, but just as the friendly looked to be drifting to a draw, Fellaini took full advantage when a defender and goalkeeper, Diego Alves, collided in stoppage time to roll the ball home with almost the last kick of the match. That's it in sports, and we're now going to switch over. And that's it on NTV at one, by the way. But we're going to switch you over now to Studio B, where our experts are going to take us through what's happening in the rest of the sports world. And Rwanda's uh, Football Federation has written to CAF, the Confederation of African Football, over concerns about Ibora in Nigeria. As Rwanda is uh, supposed to play um, Nigeria in AFCON and our experts this month, Daka Wachigongo, Dev Dramansi and team will be giving you the latest on that. Have a good afternoon.